Here's a little video I'm trying. It is um, snowy Seattle winter 2019. Pretty wacky. But um, let's see what happens here. I'm just going to um, show a uh, just an exercise, a little something to to practice in one point perspective. That like some other of my things, I just sort of break down into a sequence of things that is I urge you to memorize. But um, this is just a quick one that I did. But I'm I'm starting off with um, capital A. It's not a perfect capital A. It's kind of wide. I'm going to finish off the, uh, or just connect, join that line right there, the bottom one. And through this point right here, I'm also going to sketch a horizontal line. So hopefully this is already um, indicating a, a perspective drawing setup idea that you're very familiar with. From here, I'm going to um, I'm going to identify these four points. It's just going to help me kind of in a slow sequential way be able to continue to wrap my head around what I'm trying to look at here, what I'm trying to get to. From each of these points, I'm going to sketch a little bit of an an up down going um exactly through each one of these. This is a point where the angles of things start telling your brain, well they start tricking your brain into not understanding what is up and what's down. So doing something like this just um, is a simple thing that kind of reinforces, okay, yeah, I know what's going on here. And from here, I can continue down or up. I'm, I'm building some sort of a one-point perspective box, boxy object that will become all sorts of things. I think I'll build up. So I'm going to um, say there's an edge. This is one edge that's this tall. If I shift it straight across, it's not going to change size at all. So I was going to say clone. If I clone one and um, shift it straight across, it won't chase, change size. And to find out, to determine how this edge, this line, would change in appearance as it moves closer, I'm going to use the, uh, the two lines here. Make that straight line to the horizon, the up, down, up and down divider line. And from there, extending a line through the other known. And where these two intersect is where my unknown is. Let me uh, I meant to connect those, but that's OK. So that's that one. I could go straight across here, but I'm just going to kind of practice this um, going through two points I know, aiming 
extending a line, hitting the horizon, and turning around through this one. Now, as you can see, these are perfectly aligned. No, they're, they're, they're very much not. So let's, well, very much maybe was a strong statement. This would be a good candidate for a little unmarked straight edge. So there's my box object in one point perspective. I have a good idea that all the side to side lines are indeed side to side, left to right, and flat, and all the up down lines are indeed up and down and straight. sort of darkening in the uh, the visible part. And softening up the uh, the parts that we wouldn't necessarily see. So hopefully that's reading is an actual um, one-point perspective, three-dimensional box object. I'll do a different kind over here. Still going to start with my um, letter A, but I'm going to make it a little wackier. Let's see. So my letter A, my crossbar, sort of low. Usually you can experiment with all sorts of things, but um, and then through here, this point. And then I'm gonna um, just sort of is isolate these four points that are the four corners of the bottom side of this other box shape, box structured object that I'm looking at in a little bit different, at a little bit different angle, alignment maybe I should say. Um, Clean that up a little bit. So I have these four points, and again, I'm going to sketch just a quick up down guide, especially when the up downs that are that are lines that are supposed to be read as actual from the floor up as opposed to up down lines that are supposed to read as something receding in space but just in a sort of straight up fashion trying to understand what's going on with something like this can be helpful with these little crosses hi so once again i will um Bye-bye. Extend one of these up. I'll extend this other one up.
<laughs> I got some friends. Um, and now to find where this line will connect. Go from here to the horizon and back. And this is a good example of, you know, everything is all lined up and I, it's sort of like, good, good grief, I don't, I don't know, how would I do that? And, the, and this is a, a, a great candidate for saying, hey, the other way I can do this is by just cloning this one over here. There's going to be a really subtle angle right there darken up all those that would be visible soften up the ones that wouldn't be and there's an example of something like that perhaps I'll do one last one where I will um, well I'll show you what I'm gonna do certainly don't have to um, keep everything below the, the horizon line. I might do two more actually. I'm having so much fun. Except I do need to um, <laughs> get some ant spray. Um, okay. There I was. Good thing I've done this sequence so many times I have it memorized. I'm distracted by just a couple ants. So those are those four points. Doing this little up down line. I think it's actually kind of cool. The um I'll I'll, I'll talk about that later. But um, I could certainly start with uh, these closer edges. I don't have to start with this back one. I find it helpful to make sure that you understand every, any and all directions, forward, backwards, up, down, left, right, right, left. And it's confusing um, to think of these directions on a flat piece of paper as forward and backwards, but that's what, this is not a forwards and backwards line, but um, these are, and that's what's, that's what's challenging about perspective drawing at its core, in my humble opinion. So let's see. I did this front one this time. <laughs> Maybe they just like art. Um, and I want to figure out the height of these unknowns. So in a similar way, I take a line through my two knowns. I stretch it up to the turnaround point. I suppose turnaround maybe is not a great, but um, the shift, I don't know. But anyways, at this, at the horizon, this point right here, I'm going to shift to a line through 
my final known point and where these extended lines intersect is where that point will be. Same thing here through these two to the horizon back through this known. This is obviously a lot taller than the others the other examples. And hopefully that's lining up decently. But that is an example of a one-point perspective box structure where part of it is above the horizon, the up-down divider, and part of it is below. And let's see if I can still squeeze in one more. I wanted to do something where I'm just extending um, the verticals down. Those four points. I mean, you could certainly make a, a table. This start a table this way. Where this is going to represent the the height of the leg. I can clone that one right over here. It's going to represent the other front leg. To find the where the rear legs will stop, I'm going to extend some, just extend a little bit, and then figure out where they'll stop by going through the two knowns to the horizon. Turning around and then to this last known. Yeah, I'm fudging, I confess. Being attacked by ants. Be nice to me. Not really. I'm not really being attacked by ants, but you still really need to be nice to me. So that could represent a table, and then from there we'd go into details of different characteristics of the table legs, etc. I do want to I do want to um, say that I do encourage you to help just keep reinforcing a sense of what is closer to me in this drawing in this picture plane and what is further away with these these points I wasn't doing it so much on the fly, which I encourage you to do. Just to know that closer points are bigger. And further points are smaller.
So go practice that a bunch of times and have fun. And we'll keep learning. Okay.